These are painful times in our divided nation. For some, the pain is new. It's an awakening prompted by cell phone videos and the world of social media. For others, the pain is old. It's familiar. It's an old pain linked to their own life experiences and the experiences of their elders. The plague of racism and its manifestation in police brutality has prompted people of faith to look to our beliefs and traditions for guidance. Civil rights hero, Congressman John Lewis, has urged us, when you pray, move your feet. What actions then would our faith dictate? How and where do we move our feet? A common thread running through the most basic directives of our various faith traditions is the message to love thy neighbor. Why is that message so very hard to embrace? Was George Floyd our neighbor? Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Arbery? There is, sadly, a tendency to divide our world into us and them, self and other, and to assign value to each side of that equation. The toxicity of racism strips the other of their humanity and allows negative images and false beliefs to flourish. Did the police officers who killed George Floyd see him as their neighbor? Did the white man who murdered black church members in Charleston, South Carolina, see them as his neighbors, his brothers and sisters? Jewish theologian Martin Buber has taught us that the presence of the divine can often be felt in the experience of the I-Thou relationship. When we are truly connecting and appreciating the value of the other, he or she becomes thou, and the moment is sacred. In the Zulu language, there's a word sawabona, which translates to I see you in English. But sawabona has a bigger meaning than its literal translation. It means, I see you, your value, your uniqueness, your talents, your gifts, your humanity. In contrast to I-thou relationships and in contrast to Salobona, when the other, our brothers and sisters, are seen as an it rather than as thou, they can be used and abused. They can be taken into slavery, denied the right to vote, denied quality health care, fair access to housing, education and employment, and fair treatment in the criminal justice system. Let us strive to always see the humanity and the value in all people and to relate to others with understanding and respect. Let us strive for I-Thou relationships with all whom we encounter along our life's journey. In Judaism, we're told that to kon olam, to repair the world, is a responsibility that all of us must share. The damage done by racism has accumulated over generations. The work of repair is required in every major institution in our nation. We must seize the present moment, a moment when the nation is on high alert, when many people are willing to stop the action of their day-to-day -day lives and come together in the streets, in meetings, in their religious services, and really look at the problem of racism in our country. But we must not stop with this present moment. We must sustain our efforts and continue to strive for the elimination of racial injustice from every corner of these United States. Our faith compels us to do this work, not to stand by while others are suffering, excluded, exploited, assaulted, and killed. We remember the words of the prophet Micah, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? We draw on the prophet Amos as we pray today, let justice roll on the water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Lord, help us to be the carriers 
of that message. Let us remember that every man, woman, and child is our neighbor. Help us to repair the world as we work on our own blind spots, become increasingly aware, and join ranks with marginalized people. Let us draw from the wisdom of our prophets, stand on the shoulders of the giants who have gone before, and make a difference for all God's children. We'll conclude with a story about a group of third grade children from Southwest Michigan, where we live, who were participating in a program called Calling All Colors. This program, which has been active in our area for 20 years, brings together elementary school children from the adjoining communities of St. Joseph and Benton Harbor to participate in shared diversity education activities. The residents of St. Joseph are more than 90% white. In stark contrast, more than 90% of the residents of Benton Harbor are black. Calling All Colors was created as a way to help build bridges across this large racial divide. In the Calling All Colors program, the children are divided into small groups of 10 to 12 with a trained facilitator coordinating what happens. Each child in the small group is partnered with a buddy from the other school. After participating in a variety of activities designed to reduce stereotypes and highlight commonalities, the children assemble in a circle with their buddies at their side and talk about their experience. In one of the groups that I led, I concluded our circle talk by sharing a tapping into their feelings. I told the children that adults, as well as kids, usually feel apprehensive when they're going into a situation that's unfamiliar, and that it was unusual for them to be together with children from the other side of the river in Southwest Michigan. When adults are trying to figure out what comes next, we usually try to guess what it will be like in that new experience. And the same is true for kids. Sometimes our guesses of what it will be like are spot on, and it really plays out just the way we imagined. But other times it's different, and we're surprised. So I ask the children, in this situation on this day, was it the same as what you imagined it might be, or was it different, and were you surprised? After pausing for a few minutes and looking deep in thought, a black boy from Benton Harbor leaned forward and said, I was really surprised. I asked him, what was surprising for you about how this day went? And he put his hand on the shoulder of his buddy from St. Joe, and he said to him, I was surprised you liked me. And his buddy reacted with, I was surprised you liked me. Within minutes, all of the children in that circle, those five sets of buddies, exclaimed the same reaction. I was surprised she liked me. I was surprised she liked me. When we're raising funds to keep Calling All Colors Go beyond this 20th year, people sometimes say, how long will you be doing this? And we say, until no one is surprised. So the thought I want to leave you with today is let us pray for the day when we really see one another and we see one another as brother and sister and no one is surprised. Amen.